Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Centralian Profiles. We are very delighted to have with us here on the show Mr. and Ms. CPU 2019, so Ms. Salve Lia Santosildes and Mr. Marlon Barberona. So for the information of everyone, they are both from the College of Law. So this is a very historic win for your college, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, I, I think as far as we know, this is the first time that uh, both. both crowns came from the same college, so yeah, they call it historic. Wow. So kindly share or you know, walk us through your experience throughout the whole pageant. So who would like to go first? Ladies first. Um, this is actually my first time joining mm. a pageant. So, of course, at first, it was very difficult for me to say yes because I have to think of my studies and I'm also a full-time working student. <clears throat> but uh, during our screening, it was actually Marlon who, um, well, persuaded me to join. So, um, it was a very good experience. It was difficult but at the same time, very fulfilling for me um, because it's my first time. And at the same time, um, bringing the crown to the College of Law is a very big responsibility at the same time and an honor for me. So, Thank you. And you, Marlon? Um, well, uh, first, I was also uh, not sure if I, would like, if I would want to join this pageant because, you know, uh, we came from the College of Law and the general thinking would be they are old <laughs> or you know uh, i think uh, some people would just would just say uh, they are supposed to just read their books and they 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 are they are supposed to be busy with their with their with their studies so i think that's the most uh, I don't know the term. Uh, common misconception. Yeah, it, it's it's the common misconception. But well, uh, just like what I said during the screening, when they asked me uh, why did you join, or first year you were uh, in the, during your first year, during your second year, uh, we were trying to convince you to join, but you declined. And now on, the, on your third year, you wanted to join. So, just like what I said. Uh, this year is going to be the year for the College of Law, and uh, I said to Sab that uh, you have to join. We will join because we will be representing our college, and this is going to be our year and this year. So indeed, it was. Yes, indeed. Uh, fortunately, yes, it was. Yes, So uh, Sab mentioned that uh, it was her first time joining a pageant, but I think in your case, you have experience with uh, with when it comes to pageants. Can you tell us more about um, your experience? Well, uh, again, this is devastating on my part. <laughs> Why? One thing, okay, uh, one thing is, uh, first, uh, again, I was uh, quite uh, hesitant. hesitant because, again, I'm from the culture of law. And then second, uh, they would say, Marlon has already joined some pages before, even outside outside the college, and that would be uh, maybe unfair because uh, he will be competing with junior high school students, senior high school students, and their age, their ages are like half my age. So, uh, but yes, I, I joined uh, pageants before when I was in uh, my bachelor uh, when I was in West Vista State University. Uh, I was <laughs> sorry. I was crowned Mr. Arts and Sciences because my my pre-law uh, degree was Paul Sai, and then after that I joined Mr. Ililo City, and yeah, fortunately I also won. So, so was your pageant experience? Do you see it as a strength or a weakness? Definitely, it's a strength because you know when when you have experience in pageants, definitely you can use that in other future pageants that you will be joining. Uh, your confidence, the way you, maybe the way you walk or the way you deal with other people, and it's, it, 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 it will be a very useful tool because you are like uh, very much ready for another pageant because you have experienced one pageant ahead, so it's a great advantage on my part joining previous pageants. 
I, I think I have actually um, a previous pageant experience, if I am to count that, when I was 15 years old. <laughs> yes, what, what so pageant I, was um, that? It's, it's, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a very big opportunity also to be crowned as Dayang Kang Bailuhay in San Joaquin. But I don't uh, really um, think of it as a, an experience that, well, it is an experience that I could say I have, uh, I can always bring with me. But, you know, Ten years after, you forget how it feels. You don't know how to walk already. So um, since uh, college, so this is my first time. But I was, uh, it, it was in my town in San Joaquin. So, so your um, co-candidates in in Mr. and Miss C in Miss CPU, uh, most of them are all pageant veterans, veteran or veterans in the pageant world. So what made you think? Um, made you stand out? What made you stand out? Um, well, I've answered that question during the pageant night, aside from age. Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, um, I think we all have our own um, strengths. Uh, we all stand out in our own ways. However, you know, if it's your first time to join, the tendency is you put too much work, you, to, you put effort in what you're doing. Because the thing is, during the pageant, I, it, um, I don't put in my head that I wanna win, like I really want to win this competition. All I ever want to do was represent our college and, you know, give back um, to our council, to our professors, all the effort that they're giving, that they're showing to us. And I wanted to really show my best and push myself to the limits. So probably the main advantage or of me um, among, my candidate, among, among my fellow candidates is that I am determined and at the same time, um, I'm just humbled by the, by the experience and by the determination I have, that's actually probably the reason that pushed me to do my best during the pageant and all throughout the, I mean, all throughout the event. So um, my next question is for you guys, what was the hardest um, part of the competition? Uh, and what were your, your realizations? What, what were the lessons that you learned? Well, uh, as law students, I think, uh, Sab would agree to me if I say that the hardest part is trying to uh, balance, balance rehearsals and Along uh, with school work. Yeah. School works because uh, rehearsals start at 6 p.m. and our classes start at 6 p.m. Yeah. So unlike students whose classes would end by 5:30 and then they could go to rehearsals after which uh, after that. Uh, in our case, we would we will really give up. Uh, give up. You have to miss class yeah, for rehearsals. Really. It's either we will give up our class or we will give up attending the rehearsal. Mm -hmm. So that's a hard part because you know you cannot just read the book and understand what yeah. the contents are all about because you have to, uh, you, you also need the help and guidance of your professors Professor, you who know about who really know what the the author is trying to to, to tell. So. I think that's the hardest part, trying to, trying to balance your ACADs and then the making pageant. sure also that you could, you could attend the rehearsals. So a matter of time management, right? I guess so. Yeah, but, uh, well, um, it's a matter of time management, but this, the thing is, we actually had to really miss classes, so um, and it's very hard for us to um, cope up since you know every day it's it's a new lesson and every day you have to like read lots of articles so um, it's actually a matter of giving up or like prioritize what you really need to do first it's a matter of risk taking yeah <laughs> <laughs> taking risk <laughs> so as mr. and miss CPU what is your advocacy well uh Right now, uh, I think uh, I don't have this uh, established or settled program I want to advocate. But uh, as as far as I know, and as far as my awareness regarding this issue is concerned, Iloilo City is uh, the highest or rank. Sorry. <coughs> uh, Rank number one when it comes to HIV cases mm -hmm. in the whole 
Western Visayas. And uh, I consider this field as, or this issue as one which requires a lot of attention, especially from students like us and those young professionals who are uh, also part of the majority of these affected cases. So uh, if maybe in the future we would like to uh, cover this issue. How about you? Um, I actually answered that question um, when we had our screening in the College of Law. If I am to have an advocacy, um, <clears throat> It's, it's a no fact. I'm, I'm probably always the last person to enroll in our college. And, you know, it, it always takes me, like, lots of tears <laughs> before enrolling because uh, I get little to no help from my parents or from my family. And uh, I pay my tuition, fee, allowances, house. So I think if I am to have an advocacy, I would like to represent those students who are working but very willing to study, but doesn't have the means to actually pay for their tuition fees and other expenses. You know, I was thinking that we could tap some individuals who are willing to help. And the thing is, usually, um, free tuitions or, or, or these scholarships are only given to students who have highest grades or who are, who are actually performing very well. But you know, we, uh, some of the students might not have the highest grade because of, of some, some, some cir circumstances. Like in my case, I am working and it's very hard for me to actually balance. So if that's my advocacy, I would like to have students like me and also striving students to have access to, to these scholarships, irregardless of your grades, your status, because the, the reason that we are here in CPU is actually a great manifestation that we are working our best to actually finish our studies. So that's what I want. So those are very worthy causes. I hope you get to help more people um, in the future. So let's get to know you more as law students. So my question is, what made you decide to study law? Uh, well, what made me decide to study law? Uh, being a lawyer has been my childhood dream. Mm -hmm. Actually, it started when my uh, both my parents weren't able to graduate college. college. But my father would always tell me that uh, before, he really wanted to become a lawyer. And so this concept, uh, I started to like uh, or to love the concept of having uh, or representing as, or being, a, being the first lawyer in the family. So. Uh, I, I started imagining myself going to courts, uh, defending my client, or even uh, winning cases, until such time that I realized that this is not anymore my father's dream or my father's goal. But your dream. Yeah, I think it, 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 it would, uh, time will come that you will realize that you were born for this. I mean, you were, you were made for this. And then maybe uh, that is something which happened to me. Uh, I just uh, woke up one morning and then I realized I really, I really wanted to become a lawyer. And this is my personal dream. So that's it. How about you, Sab? <clears throat> well, for me, uh, my undergraduate course is actually very far from, from wanting to be a lawyer. I'm an IT grad from from West Visayas. And I was actually already working as a medical representative for almost two years before I decided to take up law. You know, it, it, it was a childhood dream that I buried long time ago and I haven't thought about it. But then I was, when I was working, I realized that I really want to learn continuously. And um, you know, working in as a med rep, it's, it's, it's fun, it's rewarding, but it's not me. It's it's like a routine for me. So while I was contemplating on what I want to do with my life, I just realized that I want I had I had this dream before of becoming a lawyer and I really want I really want it. So at first I just decided to try take the Philsat and then I realized that um 
if ever I will pass this exam, I'll make sure to finish my studies. And until now, I'm very motivated to become a lawyer because aside from it's a childhood dream, I really want I really want to make something out of myself. So, and I want to be a great lawyer who helps people. And at the same time, in our family, um, I only have like one lawyer, which is my uncle. So I want to have a female lawyer too. So that wow. I hope that would be me. Talk about women empowerment. Yes. So talking about chasing um, and pursuing your dreams. Exactly. So of course, both of you are future lawyers. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, what kind, what field of law would you like to specialize in? Well, uh, honestly speaking, I am not really sure yet if uh, what field or what kind of lawyering I want to have in the future, because maybe if you are a graduate of law, you cannot really. You don't have the freedom to choose mm -hmm. a lot of field because some would require experience, especially if you're in, in, in criminal law. Or, But uh, I am very much interested in uh, handling criminal cases because of the interesting nature of, exactly. of, of this field. And of course, I was also... Uh, inspired by our professor in criminal law. Hello, Professor Baliao. Prosecutor Baliao. <laughs> I mean, pro uh, Prosecutor Baliao. And uh, he's one professor who has made me realize that I've entered a hard and difficult road, but this is the road that I am willing to take. So I will finish and I will cross that bridge. No, road, bridge. Yeah, still the same. So I will become a lawyer and that Professor is really a good one. Yeah. Yes, how about you, Sab? Sorry. What kind of, what field <laughs> yeah. of law would you like to specialize in? Um, actually, same as Marlon, it's not something that we get to decide to while still studying because probably we'll end up on different paths or maybe it's not how we planned it to be. But um, I before, I actually wanted to be a prosecutor because mm -hmm. of yeah Marlin said because of of our of our dear professor prosecutor Baliao and you know criminal law is really interesting although it's hard but it's it, it really gets you to to study and make sure that you know almost everything but um, currently <laughs> uh, we had an OJT at um, Pau and. I was able to encounter really good lawyers and um, I realized that if ever I graduate and pass the bar and given the chance to actually have a job, I would actually apply for PAO. Uh, I want to be the lawyer for people who are, although they are defendants, but you know, it's, it's a good thing to help people who doesn't have the means, who doesn't have the money. So yeah, that's probably what I want, but, you know, as Marlon said, we cannot really decide what, what kind of lawyer we will be, so it depends upon the future. On base, based on his answer on the pageant night, we get to decide when, it, when we're there already. Okay, so we will talk more about their student life. So, since you're law students, a daily part of your life are recits. So, can you share to us some of your memorable moments when you were called in class? I'll go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm very open when it comes to, I, well, I don't, I, I have to blame myself. Sometimes I don't study, sometimes I do, you know. They, they call me like the, I, they, I call myself a finalist, you know, whenever there's exams and I study hard. <laughs> and there was a time that uh, Prosecutor Baliao call, called me. And then Still the same professor. Yeah, we had lots of really good experiences when it comes to recit to him. And I was standing in front of the class because that's how we usually do it with, with his class and other professors as well. We stand in front, then they ask us. And, you know, I don't say he's scary, but, you know, the his presence is intimidating. It's really intimidating. I was standing in front of him and he was asking me. And... Um, the question was actually Article 10, uh, Article 11 of the Revised Penal Code, and I was only able to memorize until Article 10 because I thought that the class would end at Article 10. So I was rattling 
when he told me to say something about Article 11. And I can remember he told me, Miss Antosilas, don't give me that chop soy answer. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning it's like a mixed up answer. Oh. So, yeah, but I had lots of really good experiences. There are also times that I just don't answer because I don't know what. You have to make sure that you have to really study after it. And, you know, so that my chop suey, quest, my chop suey answer. So you pick yourself up right after that. You yeah. learn resilience. You, you should. We should. That's the thing about it. You know. How about you? Marlon, any memorable moment um, when you were called in class for RESIT? Well, uh, actually, uh, I, I'm trying to remember that uh, recitation I had with Prosecutor Baliao also. But Still I, the I, same professor. I, I really forgot the, what he said, but... <laughs> what, what? How can you yeah, okay. Uh, during recitations, you are required, if you are called, you are required sometimes to recite the facts of the case. So it's like you have to <clears throat> identify uh, the accused, the defendants, uh, what happened. And then, just like what she said, no, at the presence of, of <laughs> Prosecutor Baliao, Sikatsi Prosecutor Subong. <laughs> It's very intimidating because at first uh, you would be very confident because, uh, okay, I, I read these cases last night and I think I can answer this uh, question, any question about the case. And then when, when he, he calls you, he's like, Mr. Balbirona, like that. And just like you're... Very intimidating. Yeah, because he loves shouting. Okay. I, I don't know if it's his common or his ordinary or way of, of speaking, but he really shouts a lot. And the moment you would hear your, your, your surname, it's like you would forget everything. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was trying to, I was trying to recite, recite the case. And uh, it was about uh, a stabbing incident. A stabbing incident, right? No. Uh, It's, it's a criminal case, but what happened was there was a bamboo stick, and then the bamboo stick was smashed on someone else. So it's like a case of physical injury. And so I was like, okay, so this uh, person here, uh, prosecutor, uh, I don't know the term because uh, he had a bamboo stick. Then, then he said, what did you do with the bamboo stick? Sir, he he held the bamboo stick, <laughs> something like that. Okay, then uh, he he stabbed the person with the bamboo stick, and then they all laughed because how can you stab a person with a bamboo stick? What what uh, the term I was trying to say was smash. So it's 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 funny because due to the intimidating presence of your professor, you forget to identify the proper words to be used in, in a sentence. And uh, I, yeah, just like what Ina said, uh, I, I said, twisting a pocket. I don't know why I said those words, twisting a pocket. And she, she, he said, how can you twist your pocket, Mr. Balberone? So I was like, also, oh, yeah, how? <laughs> Something You're like so that. You're so scared. So it, it, it's, it's funny. It's uh, an embarrassment on my part. But well, of course, uh, I'm proud of those moments anyways. It's a learning process. Yeah, it's a learning process. process. So many anecdotes about your law school experience. So anyway, what can you say about CPU? And if you were given the chance to um, promote the College of Law, what would you say about your college? I'll go first. Okay. Well, uh, the first good thing uh, I observe because uh, I am not an. I am not a graduate of CPU when it comes to my bachelor's degree. I, I only entered CPU when I entered law school. And uh, as law students, normally you are not really, uh, or you don't have you do not have 
a lot of time here at CPU because you would enter classes at 6 p.m. and then you would leave by by 10 p.m. So it's like when you enter the school, it's uh, th there would be no more students or a few students are left. But uh, uh, cliche yet it sounds, but you know what? Uh, when I first entered CPU, they were all talking about the central spirit, and I was like, what is this all about central spirit that they're talking? Even our dean is talking about the central spirit, and they're proud of that. And I am not familiar with this, with this term before. And so I, asked, I even asked Ina, uh, what is this central spirit all about? I even asked graduates of CPU, and they were like, uh, you would know later on, you would know later on what the central spirit is all about. And then even our professors who are graduates of the College of Law sometimes would inject or would, uh, what do you call this, uh, um, what do you call that term? Uh, they would, yeah, inject, maybe inject, <laughs> inject this term uh, in, in, in their lesson. So, uh, the next thing is uh, when I um, joined activities uh, like U Day, uh, literary contest, even sports fest, I would still encounter this term. And maybe uh, the, the peak of that moment was during the alumni homecoming when we were able to uh, participate and um, meet generals and uh, oh. awardees of, of... Just last week. Just last week, I think September Saturday. 28. Saturday, uh, that's a Saturday. Saturday, yeah, yeah and it's, a, it's very overwhelming because that's the first alumni homecoming of CPU that I was able to attend. And you would really feel that some are really old age. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, they, they are really, some cannot even walk properly and they are... On uh, on, Yeah. And you would be amazed to see that even though they have difficulties with walking around the campus or even participating in, in events like this, they still manage to join and they still manage to participate. And you would feel that they enjoy mm -hmm. doing these things. So, uh, on my part, I am very amazed because um, really this is me, uh, just like what they said, they have the central spirit on them and they just kept on coming back. They just enjoy being with Central Philippine University and that is something which I would look forward to if I become a graduate of CPU. So. Imagine yourself being a lawyer someday and then you will be invited and then you would see your friends who are also graduates of CPU and attending activities. So that's one great thing this CPU offers because your experience here will not end by the fact of graduating from this university or from this institution. Actually, it's going to be the start of your experience. So I am looking forward to experience this kind of uh, experience from Central Philippine University. And of course, this institution will offer you that, for sure. So now you know the now Central I know. Spirit. Now you know. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a long, they said, it, it is not something which is capable of being defined, but it is the language which all Centralians speak. So you will not, you cannot define it, but you will feel it. And I, I can feel it. I mean, if there are alumni homecoming, you would really feel it. Especially if you would meet graduates of CPU, you can feel it. Very well said. How about Miss I, CPU? I actually have the same experience. I don't know if I can say this. Can <laughs> <laughs> I say it? Um, uh, uh, I actually had an encounter about that as well. Uh, you know a uh, galeria uh, sabungan <laughs> i my 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 family is my my parents and my brothers are always on on sabungan or bulangan and i'm always there as well <laughs> so one time i was wearing this bar operations shirt of of college of law which has the name central philippine university so i was drinking soft drinks and then there was this really old guy probably 60s to 70s who went to me approached me and said Ga, taga CPU ka? And I was like, um, hi, sir. I don't know him. I don't know him. Because, you know, when you're in a sabungan, like, there are lots of people, mostly guys. Like, he randomly came up to Yeah, you. he just randomly came up to me and asked me if I'm from, I'm from CPU because I was wearing a CPU shirt. And then, yeah, uh, I, I told him, yes, I'm from CPU. Why, sir? And, you know, 
there was a sudden change on his face and that time I was really amazed. I actually told my, my, my college about this. And then this guy spoke to me with delight and you know he's very excited and he told me about CPU, his experience when he was still studying. And imagine that, that's like 40 years ago, 40 to almost 50 years ago, his experience here in CPU. Then he actually told me about the alumni thing. So that was, this happened January. So he actually told me that he's very excited to come to this alumni event. So I, I think that is, that's on the 28th that happened on, mm -hmm. on Saturday. And he just spoke to me about CPU, how much he's excited to go there, how much he's excited to meet his classmates, about his good experiences with CPU, about the teachers, the, the professors, the, the pastors and everything. And that moment, I realized, wow, so this is actually something that CPU brings or, or gives to students who are probably studying right now or even graduated 40 to 50 years ago. And I realized that's actually Central Spirit speaking. You know, the fact that you are very proud to be a part of this institution, this is a really great institution, I tell you that. I'm from um, same college as Marlon, undergrad from West Visayas State University. It, it was a very good experience. However, what CPU brings is a little, uh, it's different. Actually, what I saw here is a family. Mm. And um, the fact that, well, I have to admit, CPU is really fun. It's a really fun learning environment, not only because the students are fun, the, the prof professors, the school. It's about the, the presence of, of, you know, everything about the school. And yeah, I realized the central spirit is really different. It, it, it actually, you carry it with you after you graduate, um, even though you're just here in school. And that's something I would say that I love, what I love about CPU, it's the central spirit. And um, for the College of Law, of course, I have to say that the College of Law, we have really, really good professors. Um, our Dean, Dean Bedona, he's probably one of the kindest, person that you could ever meet, you know, aside from just being a professor and a lawyer and a dean, you can see a father figure in him. And the way he treats students, the way he talks to you, the way he comforts you every time you have problems or everything. Um, college of Law here in CPU is not just a, a college where, where it trains you to be a good lawyer someday, but it actually gives you a family which you can call your own. So... That's, um, I think, I would like, that's how my college, that's what my college is. Yeah, do you agree, Marlon? Uh, I, I, maybe I just add, uh, this college will not, our college will not uh, make you a good lawyer, but because of how they treat you, they are actually making you a great lawyer. Yeah. So you, you're going to be a great lawyer if you're from College of CP, uh, if you're from CPU College of Law. So you, so a different sense and a very welcoming, a different sense of yes. community in the College yes, of Law. Exactly. So more about, let's get to know more about you as, let's get to know more about Sab as Sab. So Sab is very much into mountaineering. Yes, yes. I'm, um, yeah. I'm actually an applicant of the CPU Mountaineering Society and uh, the IMC as well. So how did you get into mountaineering? Um, I tried CrossFit before when I was working, and it was a really good exercise, if I have to say. But it's, a, it's it's functional fitness, and then there was this friend who's actually an organizer when it comes to climbing climbing mountains, and I tried at first. Uh, my first experience was really good. We went to this place in Aklan and I was just so amazed of the mountains and the waters in the mountains. Uh, I was wondering before why I don't enjoy beaches because I usually don't go to the beach. Every time there are beach parties, I would be there, but I would gladly say that I would just cook the barbecue, you know, when, when they are when they're enjoying swimming, I would just, okay, bye, 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 bye lang. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I usually do. And when I tried climbing mountains, I realized that this is something that I really love, you know. It's very tiring. It's very, 
it's very hard to climb mountains but then as you go to the top all the all the jaded and emotions that you feel just blur and you just feel happy that you're up there and yeah and aside from i love the nature i love nature in general mountain climbing is a really good sport and at the same time a very good exercise that's why i would continue doing it if i have the time <laughs> So what are your plans over the summer? Where you? Um, uh, going I to actually track have a plan this November, but uh, due to the hectic schedule we have in College of Law, I would say I would not climb. But I told myself that after I graduate from from the College of Law, I will a lot one to two years just climbing mountains like anywhere in the Philippines. I ho hopefully I could do that. <laughs> Well, very a very adventurous spirit you have there. So we'll move to Marlon. If Sab is into mountaineering, Marlon is very much into movies. Am I right? That's what I've I heard in. Uh, that's what I've seen in your bio data in Mr. and Miss CPU. No, that was just a question of your favorite movies. Oh. And they all laugh because I, I stated there. Actually, I, I stated three movies. We have The Purge. Um, and I expected the question would be coming from these two movies, I think The Purge and Three Idiots, because you would really learn a lot of lessons from these movies. So uh, I, I was trying to imagine maybe they would question me uh, about the philosophy of The Purge or the, the value of friendship being offered by the movie Three Idiots. And I was surprised when they said, okay, so you stated here that you like the movie It Takes a Man and a Woman. <laughs> I like the movie because of Sarah G, but I did not really um, expect that they would ask me this question. Kind of because question. you know, it, it's it's not <laughs> it's not normal for <laughs> for my data to be or to to have this. Uh, it takes a man and a woman as one of the favorite movies. So I love watching movies, but. Uh, I only do that when I have uh, free time. It's not really like I'm addicted to movies or series. So, uh, yeah. Do you see yourself ever uh, pursuing a career in the movie <laughs> industry? If not producing a movie, then um, being uh, an actor, part-time actor, <laughs> lawyer actor. <laughs> well, um, fact is, when I was in high school, uh, I am a I, I am a graduate of of uh, the, the high schools have special program for the arts nowadays and uh, my major was the, actually theater arts and that that time I, I enjoyed doing uh, you know exercises acting like vocal exercises and but I don't think that this is uh, the kind of field I want to pursue in the future, maybe. The, I think when I graduate or when I will become a lawyer someday, I would really focus on lawyering. I would focus, this, this, this job would require a lot of time and maybe your, most of your time. So, and you still have your family to, to, to attend to. So I don't anymore see myself as engaging into this kind of, of field. Okay, so next, what is your advice to uh, aspiring law students? Uh, well, first, I don't think um, I am very deserving of that question because I am not, I'm, I'm, I'm still also an aspiring <laughs> uh, law student, but maybe I would just share some of the good thing that they could do uh, when you enter law school. Make sure that you really want to become a lawyer. Uh, do not enter law school just because you have nothing to enter to, or you have no more choice or because you want to be promoted in your uh, rank. You would undergo a very difficult process and this would require a lot of determination. This would require great uh, commitment or a very big commitment coming from you. So if you really want to become a lawyer, if you, re if you really want to enter law school, put in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, put in everything <laughs> the fact that you will become a lawyer someday and Sam. everything will follow. Well, Mar Marlon has already mentioned about the, the perseverance, the determination part of being a lawyer. For me, I think 
if there is one thing that I could um, advise to aspiring law students, I myself is a struggling aspiring law student. I want them, I would tell them that you have to really start from the first year. It's really, really crucial. It's really important that you have to really study on the first year. And um, whatever challenges, difficulties that you experience all throughout your law, law journey, may you have like failed subjects or you have failed recitations and exams, don't lose hope. Don't be discouraged. It's just a hurdle. It's just an encumbrance that you would encounter. But that is something that you could actually work your way out. So um, aside from financial problems and you know problems of time management, you just have to find that balance. You ha just have to find that um, study habit so that you could be able to cope up with your lessons. And at the same time, make sure that um, you have your friends with you, your classmates with you, because they could really help you when you are in law school. I mean, they could help you because you could always ask them, you could always ask for their opinions, and the support that you will be getting from these people are actually very important. And that's, that's my advice to the aspiring law students. So resilience, passion, time management, commitment. commitment, and company of friends. So we now come to the lighter part of the interview, which is fast talk. Mm -hmm. So you'll be answering these questions. So by the way, I'm using um, recycled paper, so we're very earth friendly here. Yeah. <clears throat> so so you're, we, we will not call you Tita boy, but we will call you Tita girl. Uh, yeah, Tita girl. Okay, first, <laughs> um, pet peeves. Oh my God. God. Um, Littering. You. Um, eating pizza at 2 a.m. Okay, that's your pet peeve. Okay, next. True love or world peace? True love or world peace? True love. World peace. I have to defend that. Uh, because when there's love, there will be peace. <laughs> Next, next, uh, mestizo or moreno? Mestiza, morena. Moreno. Morena. Morena. Next, describe yourself in one word. Awesome. <laughs> Sab. Crazy. Kung ulam ka, ano ka? Pinakbet. <laughs> Tambo na may gata. <laughs> one thing, tell us one thing you're not good at. Singing and dancing. Two things. Recitation. <laughs> City or countryside? Countryside. Countryside. Love is? Everything. Love is everything. Yeah, that's everything as well. Three things you look for in a partner. Committed, fair, good hearing. I'm from a law student. How about you? Um, committed, uh, understanding, and humble. What would you do with one million pesos? Oh my god. Uh, I'll put the 500,000 on the bank and the other would be spent for the next days to come. Sab, for my tuition fee. <laughs> I, <was. laughs> I don't have I don't have money. Eh? What is something you have done that you would never do again? Wow, this is a pageant question. <clears throat> Should I answer first? Nothing, because I think Whatever I have done, may it be wrong or not, um, I have learned from it, and probably I'll do better the next time. <laughs> Marlon? Um, I don't know specific thing, but maybe next time when, when, when the teacher would tell me to study this, I would really study. <laughs> I have to agree on that. <laughs> For the rest, it. For the rest. Okay. Next, what is the most precious gift you have given to someone? My love, of course. 
sound, <laughs> cliche as it may sound. Of course, my love is one. <laughs> Hi. Last question. What do you want to say to people who are about to give up in life? Don't. No. Um, giving up is not an option. There are always things that you can do to better yourself. There are always people who's willing to help you on, on these dark days of yours. Just find the light, pray, and you know, just be positive about everything. You may encounter difficulties and conferences on your way, but there is always another day wherein you could actually be become better, you could do a lot better, and everything is going to be okay. Marlon. Uh, to those who are about to give up, uh, take a deep breath, rest, eat pizza, at 2 a.m. Um, take a nap if you could, and then maybe tomorrow you'll find that there is another day to come. Last. I said earlier that it was my last question, but this is the last of the last. Okay, what does it mean to be Mr. CPU, Miss CPU? For me, it's a great honor and title to be crowned as Mr. I mean, Miss CPU. But for me, being Miss CPU is becoming just a normal student, a normal, a normal student who upholds the values of CPU, doing your very best every day in school, and at the same time, being a role model to to the to the students of CPU, you know, we are crowned. You are crowned. I am crowned as Miss CPU, and people expect you to be this really very nice person. But for me, I'm I'm becoming my usual self because that's how I am. And for me, being Miss CPU is. Just being a good student, you have to show to every uh, to everyone here in school that you're doing your your very best to overcome daily struggles and you know being faithful. I mean, sorry, being you know um, being a Miss CPU is a sort of an ambassadress, not necessarily uh, like an ambassadress of goodwill, but you know you have to be like a role model to the students, and that's what I want to show them. So. That's, I think, is what Miss CPU is about to me. Marlon, what does it mean to be Mr. Well, CPU? Uh, I think I have to agree. Uh, becoming Mr. CPU is, or means being a student this institution expects you to be. You know, uh, this institution would uh, expect a normal student to follow the rules of the institution to make sure that uh, you're not, uh, uh, that you are prioritizing your studies, making sure that uh, you're becoming a good example to everyone. You know, the crown will just, yeah. I mean, the title will just end after 12 months. So it's not that really, I mean, th the title itself is not really prestigious, but how people would, uh, you. yeah, would look at you, would uh, identify your actuations, that would count even after you are, uh, or even after your reign. So this, institution has given both of us the privilege of influencing other students and so it means becoming a student this institution expects you to be yes, exactly. so you have to become a good example it means becoming a role model of this institution and becoming just a good normal student is enough for Mr. and Miss CPU. Thank you very much. There you have it Mr. and Miss CPU 2019. I hope somehow our viewers would be inspired by what they've shared to us today. So thank you very much. And this is Rush for Centralian Profiles. Thank you. Thanks.